J-Day was a big success and we have all the details. Plus, we will have all your NSU sports and Kappa updates. I'm Corey Rachel. And I'm Landon Wright. Your NSU news starts now. this month, the Department of New Media, Journalism, and Communication Arts held its 45th annual J-Day. It brought more than 250 students from 13 schools all around the pairs to the Freedman Student Union. They came to find out what journalism and communication professions are all about. An issue fertile journalist Joshua Roberts has the story. Well, this is not intended to be a hands-on workshop. It's really intended for them to learn about, ask questions, and get information. So if they're thinking about a possible career study, Studies, they will know what will be expected of them when they either come to college or when they enter a career field in media and communications. I think this is a great experience for a high school student. If I had this experience in high school, I feel like I would have chose my major a long time ago instead of waiting three years into college. And I know when I was a, in high school, I would love to experience J-Day and learn different things to help me decide what I wanted to do with my future. So it's really awesome to reach out to these high school students and help them on their journey to journalism. Well, you know, Northwestern State has a, has a uh, vaunted history in producing journalists, a great journalism program. Uh, and, and during all the state budget cuts, it kind of got pushed by the wayside. And so when we created the, the, the School of New Media Journalism and Communication Arts, it was uh, a statement that said, hey, journalism is back. And so with that came the re-emergence of J-Day. And I'm just excited to see such a large group of students that are here uh, to talk about the issues of, around journalism, about what telling the story is, is about, what, uh, what chronicling the happenings of the day are in so many different ways, right? And with digital media, with uh, uh, access to information, it's so much easier to tell a story but it's also important that we, we maintain that responsibility to tell that story uh, in a truthful way, a constant pursuit of truth. With finals and major projects all coming due, many students are feeling the stress right now. Sometimes it can get overwhelming. Experts at the University's Counseling Center say that the students can take some simple steps to stay healthy mentally and physically. One step, get enough rest. Making sure that you schedule enough time in to get in a good eight hours of sleep. I know that sounds absurd because most people are thinking I'm living on five or six hours of sleep, but if you can really write down from the time you wake up to the time that you're going to bed and need to be up the next morning, I've done so many hour by hour block offs with clients. Plugging in first the time you know you need to be up and then calculating about eight hours later that you know that you need to be in bed. Welch encourages students to eat a healthy, balanced diet and keep scheduled to stay on track with their projects and work. Now, we want to remind you that counseling services are free for students. The Counseling Center is located in the Student Union, room 305. There are safety concerns tonight for NSU students trying to get to the new campus bookstore. The Marketplace Bookstore has been open for business at the start of the fall semester, directly across from Watson Library. But students are trying to walk there from library are now forced to cross busy Highway 6 without the benefits of lights or a crosswalk. University and state officials say that they are looking into ways to make it safer for students, as NSU TV's Ashley French reports. I spoke to state officials about how they plan to increase traffic safety for the university. As you can see, one of the new establishments here at the University Marketplace and the traffic just going by, leaving students feeling unsafe crossing this busy highway. It's just a little unsafe. Um, you got to make sure you watch for the vehicles. Uh, and sometimes they don't watch for you, so you got to be careful. I feel like the school don't care about us crossing the street, but they know we got to cross the street because we got a whole bookstore across the street. The population of students on Northwestern's campus has been increasing to more motor traffic vehicles, pedestrian walking on Highway 6. 
The NSU Foundation created the University Marketplace Bookstore for students, alumni, and staff to utilize, and they see the urgency to add pedestrian crosswalks. We want to get that done as soon as possible if, if we can show a need to do it. Uh, there's several areas where you can see a need for a crosswalk uh, up and down the, the street, but there's only particular spots where we can do one, you know, based on the rules and regulations. And we were going to find out specifically what those are and address them you know, from our uh, standpoint. The university has taken initiative action by reaching out to the Department of Transportation and Development. We have requested that someone from the Alexandria office come out, do some traffic studies. Let's determine what's the best and safest way to have students cross that um, highway there. As well as accommodating for students who are ADA compliant. If there's any issues of uh, ADA, you know, someone needing to cross the street uh, who can't get over here, uh, the bookstore provides uh, online services, but as well as delivery services and would accommodate any student who would have a need uh, and could not cross the street and come over here to do this. I spoke with Information Officer Aaron Buchanan to get more insight on the process and data needed to properly add pedestrian crosswalks along with sidewalks. We're looking at pedestrian volume, we're looking at whether or not there are sidewalks and the condition of those sidewalks. Um, and then they're going to look at the best place to install that crosswalk based on that. So those are kind of the, the criteria that we're looking at. As far as funding goes, often we can get those federally funded because they are in the interest of safety. As for now, students have accessibility to other safety options they can utilize across the university marketplace, as DOTD will soon be adding new infrastructure to soon solve this problem. Uh, long term, we do want to see a, a traffic solution, but Again, I'd let the students know that we uh, will have adequate parking here and even we'll be adding additional parking. For NSU TV News, I'm Ashley French. Next to the University Marketplace will soon be the opening of a Chick-fil-A, where students will have additional parking along with pedestrian crosswalk to be soon added. Homecoming 2018 is just a memory by all accounts. It was a big success though. Reporter Jacorius Jetter has the look back on a week that was full of demon spirit and pride. There was just as much dancing as there was lip syncing at the annual lip syncing competition. This team fit right in with this year's Wild Wild West theme. Even old Vic the Demon joined the act. There were plenty of eight counts, stunts, and costumes as over 15 teams performed and the crowd went wild as the student athletes held up signs spelling out D-A-E to remember Deshaun Gordon who sadly passed away the Sunday before homecoming week. At the homecoming parade, Miss NSU Mallory McConkey tossed hot dogs to her fellow demons watching her pass by. These cowgirls on their float pay respect to the historic businesses on Front Street as they toss candy to the crowd. Let's go demons! The demon cheerleaders showed their spirit, along with the demon football team that went on to victory on Saturday. For NSU TV, I'm Jacorius Jeter. See you next year. So, Ashley, what can you tell us about the world of NSU Demon Sports? Well, Landon, I can definitely say we definitely had a jam-packed list of sports events during homecoming weekend, but this past weekend, the NSU football team faced a pretty unique team that we haven't beaten in quite a while. But stay tuned, we'll have more NSU TV news to come after this short break. The Louisiana Scholars College, founded in 1987, combines a great books core program with math and science-based classes. This is what makes it the state's only designated honors college. If you're looking to challenge yourself, your first step is applying today. When I was a little girl, my father taught me about business. He had me pick out a company and follow it in the stock market. 
While a student at Northwestern State University, my interest in business led to a degree in business administration, and that degree is paying off, as I now own my own company. I'm Sherry Talley, a proud and successful graduate of Northwestern State University. You can be too. Northwestern State University, students today, leaders tomorrow. Welcome back, Demon fans. I'm Ashley French, and this is your Demon Sports Blitz. The Demons took on number 18 McNeese State last Saturday in the final home game of the season and ended, and ended on a high note beating the Cowboys 37 to 34. The Demons haven't beaten the Cowboys in 13 years, but that ended Saturday night. The Demons blocked the field goal in the first overtime period that would have given the Cowboys a win. But then in the, second overtime, in the second overtime period, they held the Cowboys to only a field goal. Then on the first goal that hit Jazz Ferguson with a six-yard fade pass to the end zone for the game-winning touchdown and the celebration began. The Demons now turn their eyes to SFA tomorrow night in the battle for Chief Cato. When you play for Chief Caddo, you throw records out, out, the, out, the, out the window. I mean, you look at, they beat ACU. Uh, you know, we, we played ACU. We know what type of football game that was. Uh, they beat Houston Baptist. It's 17 to 10 at McNeese. Uh, you know, so that went down to the fourth quarter. You know, so very, and you know, there's a lot of similarities the way some of their games ended uh, as far as having the opportunity in the fourth quarter to win. And, and you know, what you're going to see offensively uh, is, a, is a quarterback with a lot of experience in the conference uh, coming back from last year. They also played a, another young man that was a TCU transfer uh, that got hurt last year. He's played a little bit this year. Two receivers in Gorey and Pace. Uh, you know, I think both over 40-plus uh, catches. So, you know, they're, they're going to be dangerous offensively as far as throwing the football. Uh, and defensively, they, they've been very solid. You know, you're going to uh, see a few different looks for them up front, but predominantly an odd look. But, but they, they've been able to keep them in some games. You know, 24-21 against ACU, 17-10 against McNeese. You know, so, you know, they've taken games to the fourth quarter. And, and you know, as, we, as you look at this rivalry and, uh, you know, over the last, what, four to five years, it's, it's like every other year, you know, somebody's getting Chief Caddo back. So, you know, you look forward to uh, that type of atmosphere, that type of game come Thursday night. Kickoff at SFA is at 6 p.m. Thursday night. Let's hope Chief makes a ride back to Natchitoches after the game with the Demons and a win. The NSU volleyball team will host the Southland Conference volleyball tournament starting Friday at Prater Coliseum. There will be four games Friday and the, and the two, semifinal, two, semifinals, two semifinals on Saturday before, before the finals on Sunday. The Lady Demons are ready to make it to the finals on Sunday, to beat, to, to on Sunday but first at UC, uh, UCA. I expect it to be a complete battle. I think we match up well with them. You know, in the first, the first set, the last time they were here, um, it was close, but you know they just kind of they kept that separation and they controlled the first set. Um, we completely flipped that and we completely controlled the second set. And then I thought there was a lot of opportunities that we had in the third and the fourth, to where you know had we gone on a little run here or had we stopped a run there, um, we would have easily found ourselves in the fifth set against them. So I, I love the matchup. I think that uh, it's going to be you know a good match for us. Um, and it's going to be a tough battle. Game time for the Lady Demons is at 6.30 on Friday when they take on Central Arkansas. The winner of the game will play on Saturday at 2.30 against the winner of Sam Houston, McNeese State game. So make sure you come out Friday night and support our Lady Demons. Turning on now over to basketball, the Lady Demons held their first home game of the season on Monday, taking on, taking on Letourneau, and it was a school day at Prather. But the Lady Demons made sure the school kids went home with a smile on their face with a 100-40 win. 
Now the Lady Demons turn their attention to Oklahoma as they travel to Norman today to take on the Sooners tomorrow night. The Demons were in action last night as they took on BYU, and the Cougars took a bite out of the Demons winning 82 to 57. The Demons now travel to Houston, Texas to take on Rice Saturday and then Houston on Monday. And now I'll do it for your Demon Sports coverage. Make sure you go to NSU.com to get the latest game recaps, schedules, and more from, your, from, your, from our wonderful sports department. And I'm Ashley French, and now I'll, do it for your, now I'll do it for your stories. Make sure you stay tuned as we have more NSU TV news to come. Northwestern State University offers you the flexibility to take classes and complete coursework on your own schedule. With support from a network of caring faculty, staff, and fellow students, NSU is now offering a flat rate tuition exclusively for online learners. Northwestern State University is nationally recognized for quality, affordability, and student support. To explore our online degree programs and register for classes, visit nsula.edu slash ensu. Northwestern State University's trademark is positive student experiences. Our university had the best ratings among the nine University of Louisiana system schools on this year's student satisfaction survey. Northwestern was top ranked university for its campus climate, student services, quality of instruction, registration procedures, and being student centered. I encourage college bound students to contact us to learn more about the positive student experience at Northwestern. Dedication. It is more than a slogan to us. It's our commitment to you. We strive to help you become who you want to be, who you can be. You will graduate from Northwestern State University prepared for a career, prepared for life. A university experience founded on 130 years of tradition, laser focused on your future. Northwestern State University, dedicated to one goal, yours. three days, the city of Natchitoches will once again earn its nickname, the City of Lights. The city will flip the switch on its annual Festival of Lights and then make the town one big Christmas tree. The festival attracts visitors from all over the state and the country. But that doesn't just happen. Reporter DeMarte Fisher talks to the man most responsible for making sure every bulb is screwed in and working. It takes a lot of bulbs, about 300,000 of them, and a lot of work to get the lights ready for the Christmas festival. I have 28, 28 men working. Uh, they work uh, when it comes uh, Christmas season. They work like 18 hours a day. They don't get to see much of their family at all. Lee McKinney is superintendent of the city's electric department. He supervises the crews to make sure the lights well light up. Everything on and then we have somebody go by and check every single bulb for the Christmas festival. So we try so hard to make sure every bulb works and it takes a long time. McKinney says it takes about two months to get the city to look like this, but that is only part of the job. People, as soon as we take them down at the end of the festival, we have a couple guys that work part-time that work all year long, checking everything, rebubbing, replacing the bad bulbs, and replacing the old wire, damage from hauling them back and forth. So pretty much somebody's working on them year round. Lee says the city has switched to energy efficient LED light bulbs. Despite the long hours, McKinney says it is all worth it. Uh, I really love that people come from uh, all over the world and they, uh, they're just amazed when they see this, uh, how beautiful the river is in downtown and, and everybody loves how nice everybody is in this town and it just, I just makes me feel good to see everybody smiling and they're just amazed at how beautiful everything looks and it makes me feel good. For NSU TV, 
I'm DeMarte Fisher. Well, I tell you, I love the Christmas Fest. It really does bring everybody together. The lights are great. The music is always fantastic. And the food, well, don't get me started on that. Also, the city superintendent of the electrical department, Lee McKinney, also gave us a history lesson about how the Christmas lights all began. A gentleman by the name of Charles Solomon, uh, 92 years ago, from what I understand, as the story goes, is on his own time, he was a city employee and he was right around retirement age and what he wanted to do is he wanted to do something different so he come down here on this riverbank none of, none of these Christmas lights were here nothing was here and he at home he made a Christmas tree and he put Christmas lights on it and he put it up down here on the riverbank and uh, everybody loved it and said they wanted more and that's what started it 92 years okay. ago so it already feels like we're in the Christmas spirit. Could you tell us what Kappa has uh, coming up for us this month? Kappa has a bunch of different events coming up over the next few weeks, but we'll have that and more when we turn back from the break. For the oldest permanent site of higher education in Louisiana. For market responsive programs meeting the needs of our community for a spirit of Northwestern on a Saturday in Turpin Stadium, for the largest baccalaureate nursing program in the state, for a winter stroll along Front Street where it's Christmas all year, for flexible schedules that consider where you've been and where you want to go, for perfect pitch and pitchforks, for 39 opportunities to learn your own time anywhere in the world for the colors of life especially purple forkum demons northwestern state university and the universities of louisiana for your future for our future what is it about natchitoches that draws you in narrow roads and brick streets walking from here to there no schedule to follow Sitting, laughing, lingering. Delicious Louisiana food, quaint accommodations, and lots of unique shops. You'll find the only thing fast is how the time passes. Slow down in Natchitoches, Louisiana. Dedication. It is more than a slogan to us. It's our commitment to you. We strive to help you become who you want to be, who you can be. You will graduate from Northwestern State University prepared for a career, prepared for life. A university experience founded on 130 years of tradition, laser focused on your future. Northwestern State University, dedicated to one goal, yours. I'm Marquan Colbert, and this is your Kappa Update. Classic on the Cane Marching Contest was held at Turpin Stadium on Saturday, November 3rd by the Spirit of Northwestern Marcher Band, and this year's grand champion was Edie White High School from Thibodeau, Louisiana. Medbeg Texas High School was second, followed by Central High School, Acadiana, and then Airline. More than 5,000 family and friends watched the 32 bands from Louisiana and Texas perform. Tomorrow night, the Chamber Winds concert will be held in Miguel Recital Hall at 7.30 p.m. After the break, the NSU Jazz Combos Benefit Concert, Jazz for Pups, will be held in the Recital Hall at 7.30 p.m. on Monday, December 3rd, on Tuesday, December 4th, at the Immaculate Conception Catholic Church on 2nd Street. There will be lessons and carols at 7.30 p.m. All three of these events are free and open to the public. And finally, one of the Kappa's largest events of the year happens the week we get back from our Thanksgiving break. And of course, I'm talking about the NSU Christmas Gala. Gala will be Wednesday, November 28th through Friday, November 30th, with performances on all three nights at 7 p.m. and a special final performance at 9 p.m. on Friday night. Tickets are $15 and can be purchased online. NSU students get in free with current ID, but must get their tickets in advance by going to the Kappa office in room 110 of the new Fine Arts Building. Go to the Kappa webpage for more information. And that is your Kappa update. 
We've got some exciting news to tell you about here at NSU TV. By the time we are back on the air next se uh, se semester, we will be completely high definition. Our television studio and control room are undergoing major upgrades very soon. After 15 years, the Department of New Media, Journalism, and Communications Arts receives a grant to spend more than $180,000 on new cameras, lights, and monitors. Equipment in the old control room will be replaced, too. The renovation project should take about two to three months to finish. We should be back on the air by late February. Well, this is very exciting. I'm excited about the new amenities that we're going to have here at NSU. And unfortunately, we're going to be gone for uh, these new renovations, but we cannot wait to see how this changes the communications department. What about you, Ashley? You know, I would definitely have to agree um, with you, Corey. You know, working with you guys and being with you guys, learning, like, we worked together for like three years, working with you, Corey, for two years, and then Quan, like, just being your first year has definitely been you know, a great experience. I can definitely say that we are like, you know, the people here for this news desk and to have the last new, and um, to, have, to have the last newscast here in this, you know, original studio that has been here for who knows how long is, is definitely great. I'm definitely excited for a new amenities, but unfortunately I'll be graduating this fall. So, um, but Landon, you'll still be here. <laughs> well, yeah, I'll be here in spirit. I've been in NSU News a long time. It's been an honor, guys. But also, you know, moving on, uh, we have a young generation to pass the torch to. Mark Juan, yes, tell us a little Juan. something. Are you excited about the studio and are you excited about Gala? Oh, I'm really, really, really excited. But I am sad that um, you guys are leaving because y'all are who I've been with for the the rest of the semester so awesome Definitely. well that's going to do it for your nsu news remember guys gala coming up the week we get back i'm landon wright and i'm corey rachel make sure you tune in next semester and see our new studio have a great night and happy holidays mm -hmm.